Howdy, howdy. Welcome back. It's another Workshop Wednesday. This week, it's a What's New edition. We're going to cover the latest Google updates and features that were released in May of 2021, which is just a few days ago as of this particular recording. Uh, it's actually a pretty big one. So hang on, strap in. Uh, if this is your first Workshop Wednesday, welcome. My name is Chris Mercer. I actually go by Mercer, and I'm the co-founder of MeasurementMarketing.io. Uh, maybe you found us through some of the podcasts and talks that we've given out there, maybe through some of the platforms. We share some of our stuff with CXL Institute, Digital Marketer, Social Media Examiner, Measure Summit. Also, maybe you're already a member of MeasurementMarketing.io. However you found us, happy that you are here. It's our job to help people like you learn how to use all these tools. And one of the best ways to do that is to stay up to date on what the latest and greatest changes and updates were, which of course is what we're going to cover in today's workshop. Before we get into the details, let's cover the framework very quickly. The measurement marketing framework, remember, it's just plan, build, and act. You should be doing this in your own organization. You plan things out, you build things out, then you act upon that what you have built. Now, when we're marketers, we typically start marketing in line, doing a whole lot of guessing, at least a lot more guessing than we're comfortable with. Our goal is to get up here where our marketing is predictably growing revenue and increasing our profits. So how do we do that? Plan, build, and act. You plan out which questions are important to answer, what information you need to get those answers, what actions you will take based upon the answers you get. With that measurement plan in hand, you then move into using tools like Google Analytics, Tag Manager, and Data Studio to first identify your traffic, who, what, and why the traffic is even coming there in the first place. Then you create and measure for the results that you're trying to achieve, typically using what we call ACE goals, which is awareness, completion, and engagement steps. Then you make sure that that's being structured in a way that naturally tells a story. At that point, when you've got your measurement implementation built out, then you can finally start using it by acting upon what you've built. That's where first you read the reports. You make sure that you're reading for the story, figuring out what's working and what's not, that gives you your basic benchmarks. You then use those benchmarks to forecast what your near future is gonna look like based upon your past results. And ultimately you will measure against those forecasts. That's how you know optimization steps, what to focus on, because you're gonna see very quickly when you send actual traffic and you measure it against your forecasts, and again, we do this every day, so we know this works really, really well, You'll know what works and what doesn't, so you know what step to actually focus on. That is how you get to the point where your own marketing efforts will predictably, reliably, consistently grow revenue and increase your own profits. That's the measurement marketing framework. All right, let's go ahead and dive into the workshop. Now, before we go into it, remember, it's all about one thing, one new idea, one new concept, one, especially on this one, because there's so many updates that are, um, some, of, some of them are released. This is kind of a weirder one because normally we cover the updates that you can go have access to, but there was a big thing that, was, that happened in May that we're gonna catch you up on that will also give you a little insight as to what's coming down later this year uh, to stay tuned for us. So we're gonna cover a bunch of stuff. Remember, just grab one thing, one new idea, take action on that. Then you can come back, we watch this workshop if you need to, to pick up another new one thing. All right, let's go ahead and get started. What's new? the latest Google updates and features released in May, 2021. Now we're gonna go ahead and just start as we often do. We're gonna dive right in. Only this time, I'm not going in to Tag Manager. I'm not going in to Analytics. I'm not even going into Data Studio to talk about the new stuff. We're gonna start here. This is something that is, I don't like giving you homework. I know you don't like homework, but this is kind of homework. You need to go through this. Google Marketing Livestream in 2021. Google for it. It is very easy if you just Google for this which I'm going to do just to show you how easy it is to get. So just Google marketing live stream 2021. You'll see it's there. Uh, it, it'll pull up the ads on air, which is what you want. You want this one, the ads on air with google.com. That's how you get to this page. Again, the reason I'm showing this to you, because it's required. You really, you really need to keep up to date with what Google is doing. Pay attention to what Google's talking about here. I'm going to cover it for you very quickly at a, at a very high level. Uh, but it's really interesting. Um, first thing that I noticed is this down here. Look at this. This site uses cookies from Google to deliver services and analyze traffic. See details or I got it. That's a cool way of asking for consent. Okay, I got it. Now I'm cookied, right? Like that, I thought was pretty interesting. The way they were handling that. Again, I'm based in the US, so that's how they're handling it. But I thought it was super creative. It avoided this whole, here's 17 different cookies we have. Do you want functional cookies? Do you want marketing cookies? Do you want, I mean, holy cow, we are putting so much on our users to try to figure out what's going on to use our sites. It's incredible. And that was such an easy, no brainer way of doing it. I thought that was great. So I wanted to point that out because that's the thing you only see once uh, when you come to this page. Now that we have that in place, 
what I'm going to ask you to do is to scroll down. I would watch this one because it gives you, now you don't have to be using Google ads. We're not, we're not big into using Google ads yet uh, as an organization. We don't use that as a primary traffic source, but even if you don't watch it, I would watch the, the live stream itself, right? Go through the live streams itself, pick the topics that are, that are most likely uh, going to be useful for you. I would go through the focus stuff. Uh, sorry, the uh, not focus, the future of stuff here. I would go through that um, and then go through the topic that is kind of yours. So they've got e-commerce here, there's automation, there's um, retail, there's travel, there's auto, finance. So whatever the topic is that might be useful for you. I would definitely do those two things. Then if you're watching this YouTube video right now, you need to also make sure you do these next things. Don't necessarily have to watch about these. You certainly could. It's nice to have. You can skip automation, but guess what? Data and measurement, you should pay attention to. So data and measurement, go through these because it's they're telling you. They are in no uncertain way talking about what's coming up and what's happening. So I'm going to give you some highlights as we go through and talk about this. One, the very uh, words that I heard the most were durable. I heard that a ton. And privacy. I heard that a um, just every other word was privacy and durable frameworks for measurement. So Google had Google gets this, all right? They 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 just recently talked. Obviously, they're talking about Google Analytics four, which is the new kid on the block. Hopefully, you're already using it, at least in the beginning stages uh, of using it. If not, absolutely, no matter what, now is the time. Raise the red flags and get your organization practicing Google Analytics four. It doesn't have to be your primary platform, but it should be being practiced right now. So. They talked a lot about privacy and durability in measurement. They also talked about what the future is going to hold. Um, and, and this is going to, to move into, we'll start showing you some updates that came out, the tag manager, et cetera, in just a second here. But watch these because you start to get an understanding of how Google is seeing the future unfold and where they are heading as a company and make no mistake, what Google says is going to be the future more than likely will be the future because they are the ones who are very much in charge, very much in charge of making the rules for the future. So they get it, right? They are working a decade ahead. So they, they certainly can see what's coming out this, this year uh, on the roadmap. So I want you to pay attention to this. It's important. Privacy, again, is a big, big deal. Uh, the reason that I mention this, and we'll talk about how they're actually releasing this in just a moment here, but there's a lot of people that came to us at measuremarketing.io when people were first coming out with the whole cookie thing and GDPR and everything else. And the whole question was, listen, we got a bunch of users who don't want to be measured. And so we got to come and figure out how do we measure all those people? And the answer is you don't stop trying. It's going to cause you pain, great pain in the future. I just, I can feel that coming. Do not, do not try to avoid your user's privacy concerns. Don't try to hide, right? You, you know, if they don't want to be measured, don't measure them. Not a big deal. There's plenty of ways to deal with to deal with data, uh, no matter where you are, what situation you are in your country. Obviously, you want to stay as compliant as you can for whatever the location that you is, is around the world. Um, but you know, keep in mind if users don't want to be measured, if tech doesn't want to allow the measurement to happen, if laws are not allowing you to measure, like don't do it. It's going to be okay. There's lots of ways around it. So that was the first message. Again, they are in not so subtle terms. They are very clearly broadcasting. Do not go around this. Uh, they're not saying what's going to happen if you do, but I would venture to say there will be a severe price to pay if you do. So I wouldn't do it. Just don't do it. Now, there's a difference between accidentally, I get that, but there's the malicious kind of the difference between white hat SEO and black hat SEO. Like there's some white hat SEO that sometimes you do and you just didn't realize it was, you know, a problem and you fix it, no big deal. And then there's the black hat SEO where you're always trying to game Google. You know, you know you're doing wrong and you're, and you're trying to game Google. Obviously, you're not in that boat of Black Hat SEO. I realize that. So I want to make sure that you don't go into Black Hat measurement. Don't try to uh, avoid user privacy and, and disregard user privacy. If they, if they just don't want to be measured, don't measure them. That was a big deal, and, and pay attention to that for sure. Um, now, because we cannot measure everybody. Remember, we've already done a workshop on this. We've done a, a workshop on how to measure that which cannot be measured because there are ways to deal with it. It's not a big deal. It really, truly I promise you, not a big deal. You just have to know how to deal with it. Um, but how is Google helping you to deal with it? And that's where you're going to learn in some of these. But again, high level, they have enhanced conversion that's now coming out with Google Ads. So you can hash things like emails and, and additional details, send them into Google Ads. And what's happening, same thing that's happening with Facebook right now with Facebook ads. The companies such as, such as yours, such as mine, 
they're able to, because they, they have details of users coming from first party data, which is a huge trend, of course, right? Everyone's saying this, Facebook's saying this, Google's saying this. You gotta make sure that you collect your own data uh, on users. So as you have the data on users, you're going to have better quality data on specific users. So because you just have details of that, right? We have email addresses. We know what they purchased. We know all of that stuff because of CRMs. We have to know that, right? Our companies literally cannot function if we don't have record of purchases. So that sort of stuff you can then send into Google Ads. You can send it into Facebook, right? Using tools like Tag Manager and everything else, you can hash these things. These are enhanced conversions. So Google Ads is doing enhanced conversions. So is Facebook. What's happening is the ad platforms themselves, Google Ads and Facebook in this uh, chat here, they're getting better quality data on fewer people, but the quality of data is better, so they will get better. This is all gonna be good news for us. This whole iOS thing that everyone's been freaking out about with Facebook, I promise it's gonna end up being better. We will all be in a better position as a marketing perspective because of technology, because of these tools, and because the quality of data is there. Again. I'm not saying that if somebody doesn't want to be measured and somebody doesn't want to share their stuff with Google, then don't do it on their behalf. But the concept is you will be able to. Now, um, the other uh, thing that they were coming into is there's a new section that I cannot show you, but it is in here. And this is why I want you to do this. They have, uh, they've showed some screenshots of a new advertising section that will actually be in GA4. Uh, evidently is what it looks like uh, anyway. It's not available for anybody yet. It's coming later in 2021, but it's going to show up in GA4. Obviously, GA4 is a big platform. They are pushing everybody in the GA4. Everybody should be, at this point, if you're watching this video, you should have an account with GA4 information coming in, data coming in. Doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to be using it to make any decisions, but you should have data coming in, playing around with it, learning how it works in the reports. Because by 2022, you will need to be using this. And we were already halfway through 2021. So time is flying. You gotta make sure you get your organization on the ball. If you're not already using GA4, start using it so you can get used to it. So by 2022, it is your primary platform because all the bells and whistles, all the cool reports are coming in here uh, as we go through. So just sort of keep that in mind. Uh, and that was really a big difference on GA4 was it, there wasn't massive changes that we noticed that came out in May for GA4 other than they definitely hinted in this live stream that they were doing, uh, which again is free, free to you to watch. It's very uh, easy to get to it. Uh, but there's definitely some stuff that's going to be coming into GA4s and you're going to have to have an account and have it open and be using it. Remember, it's a yes and. You don't stop using Universal. You do both. So you keep using Universal Analytics and then you start adding GA4 into it and then you'll learn GA4, you get better and better and eventually GA4 will be the platform you'll mostly use for answers. And that's when you switch it over um, officially. Okay. So with that, let's talk about, uh, again, the big thing with with privacy, you know, making things durable. How are they going to do this? How are they going to make a platform, an analytics platform that they don't have to rebuild again, which is what GA4 is. It's a complete rebuild. They don't want to have to go through that again. I don't want them to have to go through that again. I don't want to go through this again, setting up a whole new platform. It's not easy. So how are they do making it durable? Durable in my term, I read this as flexible. They make the platform flexible. How are they doing it? They're using conversion modeling. Facebook is also doing this. Facebook talked a lot about this with Ads Manager, how they're handling this. This is how the big organizations are handling the idea of privacy and that we're not gonna be able to measure every single little person anymore. That's okay. We never had to. We just got used to it, but we never had to be able to do that. And even though we can't do that, there are ways to handle it, which is where conversion modeling comes in. So you, you're gonna learn about conversion modeling as, as they talk about it in what they would call obviously the rapidly changing ecosystem here. So how are they going to model things? Well, first, and this is what brings us to our actual update for Tag Manager. If you go into your Tag Manager account, um, and I'm gonna show you uh, two different views of this. First is the one you probably already have. So I'm just going to go into Tags. I go into Tags, I go to Advanced Settings. You will now see under here, Consent Settings Beta. So right in here, you've got your consent settings and you can set up your, uh, the information that you need for, for consent, right? Based upon, again, geography and, and your, your, uh, whatever your, your particular situation is. This is highly customized to everybody's unique situation. I need you to know that it's here. That's the point of this update. So if you have got a, you know, using the ad storage cookie uh, that you've got set up, you could say, okay, I need to have this, you know, consent to, fire and and this is a, a google has already created this it's part of google ads if you're using google ads you can, and you're using consent for google ads you can uh, have this already and it's like okay i need to require this and now this cookie will not fire unless it has it or it's there's no additional consent required for this or it's just not set right so you can come through here you can set this stuff up and then when you've got this uh tag set up right obviously you can preview it and and uh, test it and everything but now you've got the tag firing when 
for certain consent conditions, right, as you go through. So again, they have all of these in tags. All of you should have access to this already. So advanced settings, cons uh, consent settings. So consent's gonna be a big deal. And then put in whatever the thing is that you need. It's just a demo account, so I'll just play around with it so you can see it. Um, and that's how it works, right? Then you would preview it, submit it for publishing, et cetera, um, as you go through. So the other thing that I was going to just show you, and this is also something that you will see in this post. So I'm gonna come through here and I'm gonna bring up a post here. This is in the uh, marketing platform, just to show you here. So this is in Google's blog. So if you just go to the marketing platform, look for the blog, uh, you'll see this right here. This, this post, it's the most recent post as of this recording anyway, it looks like this. Respect user consent choices with Tag Manager, it talks about this. Uh, but the cool part is I wanted to show you this little piece. Now, now this exists, this is what we, you and I just saw. This exists already. What's coming down for some of us uh, is going to be this. So you'll start to see this as well. It's this little consent overview. Now I'm gonna bring this up. I have this as a separate image because it's a little animated GIF that they did, but it's this right here. You'll see this, and then it flips into the consent section of Tag Manager, so there's a whole other section that pops up. And then you can see the consent not configured tags, consent that is configured, and you can manage it, right? So you can be able to manage consent settings in two different ways. One, individual tag, which you and I just saw, we saw that earlier. Two is you'll have this consent section, and then when you, when you see this little shield uh, that's up there, that's where you click on that, and then you know, okay, here's how I manage consent. So that's how it'll be done uh, when it comes to Tag Manager. That will be super important. Now that is not, because I know, I know some of you out there might be rolling your eyes a little bit, like, oh, consent, like what a pain this has been. It is, it totally is. But remember, it doesn't have to be hard. It can be simple like this. You see Google's messaging down here on how they're doing it. I look to large companies and I mirror those. Like that's what I'm looking for is like, what are they saying? What is their messaging? How are they figuring this out? Because there are people smarter than us that are figuring out consent and messaging and everything else. I suggest that you use those as role models as well, uh, where appropriate. Uh, but th one, the reason that you wanna do consent, the reason that it's worth going through this mess, and we're in the same boat as you are, right? We're looking at it going, okay, what do we have to do? What are we, what's easy, what's useful, et cetera, right? And at the same time, we don't wanna hurt ourselves artificially when it comes to, to losing information either, right? We don't wanna lose all the behaviors that we could otherwise have access to. Um, but the reason that we want to make sure consent is put in place and this is rolling out. So there'll be more and more of this on 2021, more uh, tools around consent and how to make sure that users are giving consent for measurement. The reason that you wanna do that is directly related to Google Analytics 4 because Google Analytics 4 was built from the ground up with this idea that it they know, Google knows. Remember, they've got a better viewpoint than either one of us has as, as to what's coming down the pike for measurement. They know that in a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, there will be less data that we have access to, right? From a, from a global sort of perspective. So they had to make a platform that could handle that, which means it's built to model, right? It's built to model conversions, like Facebook says they're gonna do. This is built to model behaviors that are happening on the site. So you still have a useful truth, which is the whole point of any analytics platform is that you have a useful truth and you can use that platform to get trends and patterns. Remember, the truth is in the trend, the power is in the pattern. So you can use the platform to get trends and patterns. And when you have the trends and patterns, you have something you can use to forecast. You have something that you can use to measure against. And you can obviously optimize you know, steps that aren't working. That's all you need. But how does this platform, and this is what I've been wondering personally, how does this platform going to model stuff? Like, Yes, it might know that I had 734 measured users, but how does it know the users that weren't measured? Well, the way it's going to know at least some of that is because there's going to be tags that Tag Manager will have that it will try to, to uh, fire, but it can't because it doesn't have consent because it didn't get, they could have fired. And remember, I wouldn't know this, but Google certainly does. So they're going to know that, hey, this was, you know, we had, in this case, let's say 734 measured users that had consent, we measured, and then there were maybe 15,000 others that weren't, hypothetically, right? I'm making up these numbers, but hypothetically, Google would know something like that. Well, now it knows, okay, here's the sample size. This becomes a sample size of users and all the behaviors that are, that are measured so we can get trends and patterns. And then my guess, and I'm totally guessing here, but that it would extrapolate out and go, oh, well, we actually had 15,000 potential users. We only measured fully 734 that had consent. Therefore, we can extrapolate out and then start using conversion modeling and, and, uh, and AI and machine learning to essentially represent 
what the actual user base looks like, what the actual uh, behaviors are. More and more useful because you get a larger data set. That cannot happen. Not, not will not. It's, it's, it's a, it's a not, this is not an optional thing for consent because you're not going to be able to have modeling unless Google knows that things have consent or don't have consent. You have to be able to figure this out. So consent's gonna be really, really important. It's gonna need that as a signal in order to make the modeling part better and a lot more useful for you. So this is where consent, honestly, it becomes a little selfish. You should set up consent because it's gonna make your job easier in a year. Maybe not right now, I get that. But a year from now, you're gonna be really glad that you set up all this consent stuff because of the, the uh, features that'll be available to you because you set that up. So I'm, I'm, uh, I have a lot more faith in, in the plan. I've always had faith in Google. I'm definitely a Google fanboy when it comes to this stuff. However, I get it. I get the vision where they're going and I start to see some of the how steps of how they're gonna accomplish it. And I'll tell you, in my humble opinion, it's a really good plan. So set up consent and work toward using that. These are new features for everybody. Nobody had these you know, until May, uh, right toward the end of May, actually, these little consent features. So start setting this stuff up. They're making it easier to use. It's going to integrate with consent platforms. So these are all changes coming down. Focus on 2021. Doesn't have to be today, but focus on 2021 to make sure you've got consent in place by the end. Um, and you've really got robust uh, features set up because it'll make GA4 better. It's gonna make it better when you do that. Um, so wanted to make sure that you uh, you knew that was coming down because modeling does not yet exist in GA4. They've talked about it, but it doesn't exist. There's no way to show modeling. It's coming out 2021, later part of 2021. Cannot function unless you've got consent set up. At least cannot function uh, uh, usefully, I would say, right, to its, to its max potential. So that's where these two things are finally connecting. Consent and I get models and I'm going to get more useful data. So in a way, setting up consent, a very real way, setting up consent will help you get a more useful truth. So it's a time to focus on it and start talking, having those conversations in your own organization of what it looks like and how you can get it done by, let's say, Q3 of 2021, uh, somewhere around there uh, to that point. Okay, so that was really it when it comes to Tag Manager and, and analytics and how they're working together. Again, make sure you go through this. Um, data measurement specifically, for sure, uh, on the live stream to go through that. Now, the final thing, we're gonna talk about Data Studio because let's face it, Team Data Studio rocks it out every single time when it comes to this stuff. So in Team Data Studio, they had a few different things uh, which I thought could be useful. So we're gonna go into our little sandbox report here. So uh, first thing, so as we come through here and we're going into uh, Data Studio, first thing was under the uh, more options, they've changed, if you're looking for like, where's my present? It used to say present and stuff up here, it's gone, it's under this. So they've moved it to this little, um, these used to be called hamburger menus, I don't know what you call the three dots anymore, but the three dots menu. So you can present, you can make a copy, you can refresh your data, this is where you do it. So they just moved it where things were. I'm gonna click on the edit screen because that's where many of us are gonna be seeing this. We can obviously see it's a published version. If I click on edit, you'll see the uh, publish, something else is here, but that present goes away, that's because it's here. So uh, refresh, make copy, again, present in the, in the view, mode, uh, view mode. So there's where I do refresh and make copy, okay? So just important that we know those are there, especially the refresh data, because we use that a lot. And when that disappeared, it was like, where did that go? That's where it is, right under there. Um, other things that you can do, if you go to file and then you go into version histories, this works exactly like Google Docs, which is really cool because I actually use this feature a lot uh, for some of our more important spreadsheets that we use. I will name the versions. So I'll be like, oh, this is the one where we did this, or here's, here's the one as of May 1st, or here's the one as of June 1st. So you can see your version history, just like you can with Google Docs, but you can now name them. So you can say, okay, this is the dashboard that we did for this launch or that had this change in it or after. It's kind of like annotations in a way. Um, but using naming versions, I think, is super useful um, as you're going through. Also, and this is kind of our, our final change, and then I'm going to talk about that present feature just one little bit, is in, uh, let's go into edit mode here. I'm going to go to create a new field. I won't do this for real, but I'm going to copy and paste stuff just so you can kind of see it. So in the field, when you do a calculated field, we have this case statement where it's kind of like an if this, then that. Well, now you can do things like this. So it used to be, um, now this is given to me an error because there's no dimension called satisfaction. And this is just a, an example uh, that we put in here, but uh, that we actually copied from them, as a matter of fact. But this basically says, hey, case, when, if the average of whatever this metric was, again, this is just a fake metrics put in here, doesn't exist, our dimension, but if this average was greater than four, then return with, make the value of this field, the word good or fair or poor, it didn't used to be you could do that. So now you can actually do this, you can use text and date 
uh, for the case statement. So that makes the case statements more valuable. So if you're trying to figure out like a, in spreadsheet world, you would do like an if, if uh, statement or an if function that can kind of do things like this, like, hey, if this cell equals this, then do this, you know, return this value in the cell. This is sort of the same thing, only now you can do text and dates. It becomes really useful, becomes very logical, helps Data Studio start thinking for itself a little more. Um, so if you haven't done custom fields um, in Data Studio, A, know that you can, and B, check out case statements. They also have if, if statements as well. Uh, they work really well, really, really well. Those are my absolute most useful things that I could uh, suggest that you, you take a look at. But now, especially because they allow text uh, and date uh, as a return. So you have access to that. Um, and then finally, and I'm going to go back to the view section here as we go through. Let's get done. We'll go to view. The present mode changed ever so slightly, which is why it says present new here. So with present, you can actually go through and you can send pages. This is actually a horrible one to show you because I don't have many pages in this one. Let's see if I can pull up one that's got a bunch of pages. Uh, let's try this one. This is an older one of ours, but I believe it has a bunch of pages in it. So we can see, man, look how far we've come. Okay, so we're going to go here. I'm going to go into edit and then present. And so there's a page, right? So it shows that. Now, see this down here? You can advance it every minute. So if you're doing a presentation every 10 seconds, every 15 seconds, every 30 seconds, every minute. So it can automatically proceed, right? And it works just like a spreadsheet, you know, or sorry, spreadsheet. It works like Google Slides. That's what I'm trying to say. It works like PowerPoint or Google Slides. And you can go through, I'm just hitting the arrow keys on my keyboard and I'm flipping through the pages. Now, obviously, when present mode, when you have this present mode, it's super useful, but you got to make sure that the pages are built for presentation, right? We built our pages at this point anyway to be used within Data Studio, which is why they're so long, because um, it just doesn't really matter when you're in Data Studio just seeing a report. It works just fine. But present mode, not so much. So you got to think a little bit more about what the size of the page looks like um, and how it's set out, but just know that present mode is there because that's a super cool feature, especially if you are presenting to your clients or to your uh, C-suite executives, your stakeholders, and, uh, and of course you can automate it, which is kind of nice. You can say, hey, every 15 seconds, it'll show you whatever the new thing is um, going through there. So know that you can do that. Also very cool for those offices that have monitors uh, that have the dashboards up and you can rotate your dashboard now. You can just set it to present, send it to that monitor and then have it rotate through every, every minute or every 30 seconds, whatever the latest, greatest uh, dashboard page is. So really cool thing that came out again with Data Studio for the win. Team Data Studio always comes out with the most changes. Um, so, and it, the platform continues to, uh, get better and better and better. So wanted to make sure that you knew that as well. With that, we'll bring this to a close. We covered a lot. Normally these what's new workshops can be a little quick uh, because we're just covering the highlights, but because of the Google marketing live stream uh, for 2021 that came out, there were a lot. There's so much in there. I watched hours and hours of that. You should too, because don't look at it in terms of like, oh, I'm going to learn something I can start using right now. Though there's some of that for sure, like the consent stuff uh, with Tag Manager, but look for what's coming and listen to the words and listen to how many times they say privacy and consent, consent management, consent platforms and measurement durability because they get it. They know that nobody wants to go through this all the time. They know you need to be able to reliably use your data, that you need a useful truth when it comes to an analytics platform and they're doing it. They're absolutely doing it, but don't trust me. TBV. We always say trust but verify here at measuremarketing.io. So don't trust me. Verify it for yourself and go up and watch those live streams. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. All right. Next week, we have a, a new workshop. It's our getting started edition. For those of you that are beginners out there, we're going to talk about how to audit your own Google Analytics setup, where we're going to talk about both Universal Analytics and GA4 and how to know, you know, what you, where you currently are and you know what's possible. So it'll just help you or maybe for your clients uh, understand what your setup is current look like and what the next steps would be. That's all this is going to be. So uh, how to audit your Google Analytics setup. If you want to make sure that you get that, just subscribe to the channel, assuming you haven't already. I uh, love those, by the way, who have been subscribing and sharing us around the world. It's been awesome to see the subscriber counts grow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the comments, for the questions. Uh, we definitely get to them as fast as we can. Uh, but thank you for all of that. So thanks again for subscribing and for sharing. You also have the uh, uh, opportunity to join the measurement marketing toolbox. This is our free membership. So you get these weekly workshops, all the tools that we have for measurement marketers. Uh, just a chance to kind of get your feet wet a little bit with this and understand our stuff a little bit more. Uh, that is free. Just go to measure.tips slash WW. And finally, if uh, you want, you can go to uh, the Measure Marketing Academy. Uh, that is our paid program. It's our flagship program. Why did we create that? It's because of this. 
the framework because people need help sometimes going through the different stages. What are the important questions? How do I think about them? How do I know what information is important to collect? How do I know what actions I'm supposed to take? How do I define my who and why with traffic and structure my UTMs properly? How do I set the goals in the right way? What goals should they be? And what do I do with those goals when I get it back? How do I structure it? So I'm tying traffic to results and it's really a story, not a bunch of data anymore, but it's telling a story. How do I read that story to get benchmarks? How do I forecast? How do I optimize? What steps do I take to do all of that? That's what the framework is all about. That's what the Academy will help you to do. There are a number of options back there. I'm gonna do a very quick uh, show and tell here. In the Academy itself, when you first come in, you see these six blocks, that you, that's what you have access to as an Academy member. You've got our courses, on-demand workshops, ask instructor support, and the winner circle are sort of the key uh, major parts of this uh, that I would say, obviously you have this other stuff, free resources and the manage account section. But in the courses, you have all of our courses listed by date. Look at this, Tag Manager Server Side is coming out. It's starting in June 14th. So we actually have a couple of weeks. We'll be releasing this one. This is our newest one coming out. But here's what we just did for May. Here's the update we did uh, for April. And you can see all of the, the different courses by topic as well. Tag Manager, we have you know, Google Analytics 4. So if you want to get started with GA4, this is where it's at. Uh, Data Studio, of course. Uh, dashboards and reporting. Measurement strategy, right? So there's lots of things in there. So whether you want to learn about forecasting or optimization or measurement, it's in there. Those are just the courses. That is here in this section. Then there's the on-demand workshops. That is this, where you, see, of course, see the workshop that we're currently doing, right? Same one that's on YouTube. But the rest of these have been edited down from our YouTube videos. We've taken out this sort of stuff as an example. Uh, we do Zoom effects and things like that to make them what we call student editions, very focused, easy, fast to get through. So you don't have to watch all this stuff on YouTube if you don't want to. You would have access to them as an Academy member, the, the edited student editions down here. Uh, so you have access to that. Again, we make them searchable. So you can search for something and then it searches the entire site, both courses and the on-demand workshops. So you can figure out you know, the, the topic that you're looking for and it'll spit out all of those for you. So that's the on-demand uh, workshop section. The uh, winner circle, which is right in here, that is our community. So that's the community here. People come in, ask questions, different groups. So you have that. It's also good because you have peers back here as well. People who understand measurement, but maybe they're better at technical SEO stuff or they're better at Google ads or they're better at Facebook ads because we don't run traffic. We just talk about measurement, measurement strategy. So that's our, our forte. So others are back there that you can maybe help out with your secret powers. Maybe you got better powers when it comes to being a copywriter or offer creation or something like that. You can help people out because everybody understands measurement back here. You can feel free to ask questions and get help from other members. And then there's ask an instructor support. This is the feature I like the most. This is where you can actually ask our instructors questions. It's private between your side and our side. Um, you go to ask a question, you can pop in what your question is, the details of the question, send us over screenshots and videos. It is quite literally like having a consultant available to you. Um, typically within 24 business hours uh, is when we get responses back to you. But you know, nine times out of 10, the instructors are sending back video uh, and screenshots as well, if you're sending us videos and screenshots. So it's how, you can have a, a, a very uh, real sort of personal answer, a customized answer just for you. So whether it's a strategy question, whether it's an implementation question, a tag manager question, a thought style question, anything you want to send us over can go to the instructors. And again, it's private between your side and our side. Um, so you have that. Winter Circle is more of a public forum. So that's the academy itself uh, that you'd have access to. Um, the way that it basically breaks down is essentially we've got the courses, the Ask Instructor Support, the on-demand workshops, the Winter Circle, courses, and you get access to every single course now and in the future that come out with new courses, all the updates as well. It's roughly about a $3,500 value that comes from those. The Ask Instructor Support is roughly about a $500 value. There are no limits to the questions. You can ask whatever questions you want, obviously around measurement, um, but that's it. You, you, can ask, you can ask four questions a day, five questions a day. It doesn't matter, right? Um, use it as much as you need to. That's why it's there. The on-demand workshop library is about a $4,000 value. We actually, true story, when we first started, we sold each one of those workshops for 20 bucks a piece, but there just ended up being too many workshops to keep track of, so we combined them all, but it's roughly about a $4,000 value back there because there are at least 200 workshops. I believe it's closer to 250 now. And then there's the Winter Circle community, and for most private communities, roughly about 100 bucks is what we're figuring for the value. So that means you have access to over $8,500 of training and support each and every month that you are an Academy member course, it is not $8,500 to join the Academy for the month. There are both monthly and annual options available. Just go to measure.tip slash get Academy to learn more. Uh, it'll quickly review what you and I just talked about. And then you can see uh, what the current investment is for both the monthly and annual options. Choose the one that's best for you. All right. With that, we'll officially bring this one to a close. This has been What's New, the latest Google updates and features released May 2021. Thanks again for watching this workshop, and we will see you on the next one. Take care.